Hi everyone, my name is Janice Preston and I'm working as the Regional Addiction Prevention Consultant for Western Health. So I work behind the scenes doing promotion and prevention work. My real passion though is in resilience and how we face life's challenges. There are so many challenges in life. Some are big, some are small, some we feel equipped to deal with and others we probably need to reach out. I want you to know that it's okay to reach out. We have an amazing team that really want to connect with you. So today, before we start our Party Safer video, I just want to introduce you to a few of our youth outreach workers. They're frontline staff and they are in the know. They want to connect with you. They want you to reach out to them and they want to reach out to you. So have a listen and hopefully it'll be great to put a face to a name and know what supports are out there. After this, we're going to listen to the party safer tips. Not everyone parties, but lots of you are planning a party or planning to attend a party. So we want to give you some tips to help you party safer. You have to listen if you like prizes. Uh, there will be a pop quiz. We're going to test those listening skills. So I hope you enjoy the presentation and happy graduation. Hi, I'm David Jones, youth worker for the Quarterbrook region. I started as a youth worker almost five years ago. Before that, I worked in uh, education and particularly in the areas of harm reduction. Um, and that's where my interest lies truly in harm reduction, making sure that people are educated. Your first step in reducing harm is educating yourself on how to be as safe as possible. I worked in harm reduction for five years as a harm reduction manager with the SafeWorks Access Program. So I have seen firsthand how addiction and substance can really uh, impact somebody's life. You might ask, well, that's your background. Well, why would I come to you? Well, I was also an educator for a number of years and worked in the alternative suspension program. Taking in youth that had gotten in trouble at school or lost their way somehow and helped reconnect them with the school or families. As a youth worker, I use my skills as an artist to work with youth to find ways to express themselves, to find positive ways of coping. I also teach youth in the area or anybody who reaches out to me about skills, about coping skills, relaxation skills, and mindfulness skills. And I am particularly interested in mindfulness itself. I often use my art in combination with mindfulness with you, the youth I work with to kind of ground them and use the activity to clear their minds and just be present in the moment. Remember, I'm here to help. Hi everyone, I'm Adrian Benoit and I am the Youth Intervention and Outreach Worker with Mental Health and Addictions for Stephenville and surrounding area. One of the things that I absolutely love about my job is that I get to work on the front lines with youth in our schools and within our communities. We are living in a very different world right now, a lot different than we're used to, and I understand that a lot of you may be struggling or finding it hard to cope or deal with anything in general on a daily basis. So I just wanted to say that I'm here and I'm here to help and be supportive in any way that I can. So reach out. I'm just a phone call away. Take care and be safe. Hello everyone. My name is Krista Loveless and I am the Youth Outreach Worker with Western Health in the Port of Ass area and I work as part of a larger uh, prevention and promotion team. I would have to say my work of passion would be coping and resiliency for youth and learning how to manage life stressors in an healthy way. Although I am currently working from home, I am still here and I am still available to assist you in any way that I possibly can. 
We've already developed some new and exciting ways to reach youth within our communities virtually, but we're always trying to find new ways to engage and help youth, such as our virtual grad cooking program and other presentations that we're always available to do within your school virtually. If you have any new and creative ideas, we'd love to hear from you. Uh, we're always here to help. Welcome to the Party Safer Session, brought to you by Mental Health and Addictions, Western Health. The facilitators today is Adrian Benoit, Youth Outreach Worker for Stephenville and area, and Krista Loveless, Youth Outreach Worker for Port of Baskin area. This session is intended to give you information on how to keep yourself safe and to reduce the risk of harm if you decide to drink and or use other drugs. Think ahead. Alcohol, cannabis, and other drugs impair your judgment. Be prepared. Always let someone know where you are, know your surroundings, and take time before making important decisions. So be prepared. Always let someone know where you are. Take precautions such as your cell phone and program it with emergency numbers. Know your surroundings and be alert in unknown places. Plan to party in a safe environment. For example, water activities and alcohol, cannabis and drugs do not mix. If you're outside, carry a whistle and a flashlight. Eat before and during. Avoid partying on an empty stomach. Eat something. Eat something because it's easy to accidentally head straight to a party with nothing in your stomach. Eat food before and while you use alcohol, cannabis, or other drugs. Drink water. Drink water before and during the party to pace yourself and keep hydrated. For every drink of alcohol, have one non-alcoholic drink. Drinking alcohol and taking drugs can cause you to become dehydrated. Buy safer. Always buy and get from licensed retailers, used sealed products, and avoid drinks from open containers such as punch bowls. Stick together. Stay with your friends that you trust. Tell each other what you are taking, keep an eye on each other's drinks, and ask for help when you need it. If possible, have one sober friend who can look after you. Start low and go slow. Alcohol. The effects of alcohol can be felt within minutes to two hours. Many things affect how quickly you feel the effects of alcohol and how long they last, such as your gender, your age, weight, the amount you drink, what you drink, how long you drink, how quickly you drink, and whether or not you ate food before you started. Know your limit and keep track of how many servings of alcohol you've had. Set a limit for yourself and stick to it. Drink slowly and pace yourself. Have no more than two drinks in any three hours. In cannabis, it takes minutes or takes seconds to minutes to feel the effects of smoking or vaping cannabis and up to two hours to feel the effects of edibles. Start with a small amount and wait two hours to feel the full effects. Consider using products with low THC and some CBD. Size does matter. Standard drink sizes. 12 ounces of beer, cider, or cooler with 5% alcohol equals 5 ounces of wine with 12% alcohol, which equals 1.5 ounces of liquor or distilled alcohol, which is 40% alcohol. Remember that your drink may have a higher alcohol content or come in a larger container, so one serving can easily be equal to more than one standard drink. Beer packaging in Newfoundland. So for a regular bottle, which equals 341 milliliters is one serving. A regular can equals 355 milliliters and a tall can equals 473 milliliters, which is 1.4 servings. Binge drinking is five or more drinks in a single sitting for men and four or more drinks in a single sitting for women. To reduce your risk of injury, drink no more than three drinks for women and no more than four drinks for men on any single occasion 
and no more than two drinks in any three hours. Only accept drinks and food directly from a bartender or server. When accepting or buying drugs, ask what it is before you take it, but be aware that there is no way for you to know for sure. If someone offers you a drink, just remember that it's okay to say no. Be aware that cranberry juice can hide the taste and smell of some drugs. If your drink, alcoholic or non-alcoholic, was spiked, you might feel relaxed or really tired, feel very drunk, out of control, or suddenly outgoing or sensual, or pass out and not know where you are and have no memory of what happened. If you suspect your drink may have been drugged, you should tell someone you trust and seek medical attention immediately. Avoid mixing alcohol, cannabis, and drugs or energy drinks. We mean all drugs, both prescription and recreational. Just like a bad science experiment, you should never mix two unknown chemicals together. Alcohol and drugs are made of many different chemicals and you can get very sick if you combine the two. This can lead to unpredictable changes to how you think, feel, and act. If you are drinking, the effects of marijuana may impair attention span, ability to think clearly, make safe decisions, and slows response time. Alcohol intensifies these effects. If taking ecstasy, it impairs ability to think clearly and make safe decisions. E and alcohol increases risk of dehydration, overheating, and it can be fatal. Prescription or over-the-counter medications can cause cramps, headaches, and vomiting. With alcohol, it can slow your breathing, so consult a pharmacist before drinking alcohol with any medication. Stimulants such as caffeine, energy, energy, excuse me, energy drinks, and cocaine may make you feel more awake. You may think you're sober when you're actually not. Carry naloxone. Naloxone is a drug that can temporarily re reverse the effects of an opioid overdose. Naloxone only works for an opioid overdose. However, it will not cause harm if given to someone who is not on opioids. Opioid examples are codeine, morphine, fentanyl, heroin, and methadone. It is a good idea to carry a naloxone kit if you experiment, if you experiment with opioids or if a friend or family member uses opioids. You can get a free naloxone kit at your local mental health and addictions office, or you can call the ELF line 811 or SWAP in Cornerbrook. <clears throat> know the signs. Alcohol poisoning, blue, clammy, cold, and skin, vomiting, passed out, won't wake up, slow breathing. Cannabis, greening out, vomiting, dizziness, chest pain, shortness of breath, anxiety, and or panic attacks. Opioid overdose, can't wake the person up. Breathing is slowed and or stopped. Choking or gurgling sounds. Pupils are very small, blue, cold, clammy skin. A poisoning or overdose occurs when a person uses more of a, more of a drug or a combination of than the body can handle. As a consequence, the brain is unable to control basic, basic life functions such as breathing. There is no exact formula for determining how much of a certain drug or a combination of drugs will be too much. Everybody is different and it can happen to anyone. You can know the signs, know the, knowing the signs, beware. Mixing while on prescription medication can in, increase our risk of an overdose. What can you do? Should you see these signs, there are several ways that you can help. You can shake and shout the person and try to wake them up. Call 911 immediately if the person is not waking up. If you suspect an opioid overdose, you can give naloxone if you have it. Ambulances and most police also carry naloxone can, can administer this medication to reduce re reverse the overdose. If person is not waking up after two minutes, then you can administer the second injection of naloxone. Carry a breathing mask and do rescue breathing. 
Remember that an opioid overdose causes people to stop breathing. If you are trained in CPR, then you do CPR. If the person starts to breathe on their own, put them in the recovery position and keep them safe. Put the person on their side with their top knee bent and, and under their head so that they won't roll onto their back. If you suspect someone is overdosing and needs help, don't be afraid to call 911. Under the Good Samaritan Drug Overdose Act, you can't be charged for a simple possession of illegal drugs. This exemption applies to you or anyone you are calling for. Plan a safe ride home before you go. Ask a sober friend or use a taxi. Walking, cycling, or skateboarding while you are high or drunk is not a good idea. Only time sobers you up. Coffee, cold showers, energy drinks, or food will not make you feel sober. You can still be impaired even if you don't feel like you are. You may still be impaired the next day. And ask for help when you need it. Trust your gut. If you feel like something is wrong, you are not comfortable with how the night is unfolding or you are worried about something bad happening, just call it a night. If you see something suspicious, anything that makes you feel uncomfortable or if you think someone needs help, Right away, speak up. Tell a friend, bartender, security staff, or call 911. Emergency workers are there to help, not to judge you. BridgeTheGap.ca is an interactive website for youth. It includes information, an art room, online programs, games. You can upload pictures, videos, and music, and it has a full service directory. If you are concerned about yourself or someone else, there are places you can turn to to for help with drugs or mental health problems. You can contact your local mental health and addictions office or through your family doctor. Thank you very much for attending our Party Safer session.